Hello, this is Jan from Red Toad Art Studio, and today we're going to learn how to draw and paint a hibiscus flower. And these are such beautiful flowers, but they look kind of complicated when you look at them. But if we break it down into steps, it's really easy. So, let's gather our materials. There are several things you'll need to do our hibiscus picture today. You will need a piece of paper, and depending on what media you're going to color it with, you will need to think about your paper. I am going to do mine in watercolor today, so I need watercolor paper, or mixed media paper will probably work. If you're just drawing today, you can use any kind of paper you want. All right, so you'll need a pencil, an eraser. You will need a permanent marker for inking, a ruler for making our frame around the edge. And you will probably want to download our instruction sheets. It's a step-by-step -step instructions on how to draw your hibiscus. These are free and they are are on our website at redtoadartstudio.com. You will want some type of slick surface to tape your um, paper on if you're painting and I use this clipboard for that. Then to paint, obviously some paints and as usual I'm going to show you how to make this work with good old Crayola watercolors. Now you can use any watercolors you have and it will work great but we can make Crayola work too and we don't often think that Crayola will make beautiful pictures but it can. We will need water for our paint. I like to have some water in a um, dropper bottle paintbrush. This is a round paintbrush for watercolors and this is a number five in my Artscape brand. And then at the very end, this is optional, but I like to do some of the, the um, I think you call them stamens, on our hibiscus with dots of acrylic paint that really show up well. And I have some acrylic craft paint. This is very cheap. You can get these at stores like Walmart. Something to dot with and that can be something as simple as using the tip end of a paintbrush or a pen but since I have these little um, paint daubers, I'm not sure what they're called, I'm going to use one of those and something to put your paint in. Let's see. A paper towel and I almost forgot a couple things. This is optional, but later on in the painting, I do use a couple of colored pencils. I'm using Prismacolor, Crimson Lake, and Sunburst Yellow. Now, this is an optional step, and I will show you how to do that later. I don't know if other brands will work or not. If you have another brand of colored pencils, try it on a scrap piece of paper first. Don't forget your tape to tape down in your picture if you're painting it. And I think that's about it. So let's get started and draw our hibiscus. Now a hibiscus looks fairly hard to draw, but it's not. If you follow this step by step, it's very simple. All right, let's draw our frame first. I'm going to make a fairly small frame this time. And as most of you know, we use this to line up our tape when we tape it to paint and it also keeps a nice white border on our picture. All right, we can lay that side, that ruler aside now. And the first thing we do to draw our hibiscus is to draw a circle. Yeah, a kind. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Just a circle that shows us where we want the flower part of our hibiscus to be on the page. 
Now, hibiscus flowers are fairly good size, and I want to kind of fill my sheet here. I have about a 5 by 9 piece of paper. You can use any size you want. And if you want to frame this, you might think about that when choosing the size of your paper. I'm not sure there's frames out there that are 5 by 9. You might want to think about 5 by 7s or something like that. Alrighty, so I'm going to make just a light circle here to set apart the spots where I can put my uh, flower. See, now that's a terrible circle. I'm not even trying to make a good circle. It's the first thing we need to do. Now we need to just kind of eyeball where the center is. And I'm going to lightly draw a circle there. Now to me, this is one of the tricky spots. A hibiscus has five petals. It's easy to place six petals or four petals, but five petals being an odd number is kind of hard to place around a circle. And this here, here's the way I think of it. There is a spot here where we want a head. Let's think of it a head. Arms. Just a little bit tilted up like, oh, they're happy. You know, somebody's really happy and waving their arms around. And then two legs. Now, these aren't perfectly sized, but they'll do just fine for what we're doing today. And now we have kind of a um, diagram of how we want to put our petals in, believe it or not. So let's start with a head. Let's come up here to one side of it down here and just draw and make these kind of wavy. Your lines should be wavy for a hibiscus. If you look at a hibiscus, they don't have straight, straight lines on their petals. Now we can do one on an arm. Let's do the other arm. And now for two legs. Now we can make these petals fatter if we find we have space to do that. But I actually think that came out pretty good. Now I might bring this out a little bit and this over a little bit. Alright, see now I have five perfectly good petals there. Now just to help keep things straight, I'm going to go in and erase these extra lines, which is the circle we drew and these straight lines. Now, later on after we've inked, we'll do a very thorough erasing. So don't worry too much right now. Just get the main marks off so they aren't confusing to you while you finish drawing. There we go. See, we have a very good beginning already on our hibiscus. Now, the trickiest part is doing the, um, I think it's called a stamen. I'm not an expert on the parts of flowers, but it's where all the little seeds eventually grow. And it comes up and sticks up in the middle of your hibiscus flower. So we're going to draw a long cigar shape right here. And it comes down and attaches to this circle. See how that is? Now here's the weird thing. This thing is like it has little pointy things that comes out on the end. And we we're, we're going to put three on our flower today. See how this comes out? We're going to draw there. Right now it kind of looks like a um, snail head, doesn't it? <laughs> here's its little antenna. But we're going to add one in the middle too. With little circles on the top. See those? Okay. Now, all up and down this little cigar, there are little, little things that sprout out with seeds on the ends. If you look at them, these are usually like bright yellow. And by putting them over the top of a petal, which will be red, these bright yellow little seeds will show up nicely in your finished painting. So we're going to put tiny little, I'll say cigars again, sticking out from different places. 
along the side of this. Now some of them may stick out and you'll just see part of it because it'll be on the other side of it. And some of them will be pointed up. Just make several different ones through here. You don't have to be too horribly picky about these. Let's put another one here part way. And then these have a seed on top. Just a little circular seed. Well, I'm saying a seed. I may not, it might not be a seed, but whatever it is, there's a little circular thing right there. Okay, that's the hardest part of your, your hibiscus. You've already finished the hardest part. We're all ready to go to page two. As you see here, this is where we are at on our instructions. Let's go to page two. Here's our page two. And in fact, this shows you where the little circles go that we just made. Now we're going to make some lines down the middle of our petals. So, come to your petal. We're going to make a line that we're going to fill in with our ink and make it dark. Just a narrow little line like this, and then we will fill this in. And we want one of those down the center of each one of our petals. You don't want to make these too big. Now, the one on this is going to be pretty well hidden. I think it would go right here, so we won't even see that one. Now, let's draw some leaves in. Now, a hibiscus has kind of a jagged, edged leaves, but just for our first sketch, let's not worry about the jagged edges. Let's just trace out some shapes for some leaves. Let's do it like this. You can put as many as you want in here, depending on the size of paper you're using. How about that? Now, let's go in and make those edges jagged. Now, my leaves are running off the edge of the paper, which is what I wanted. I want my page to be full as can be. See how those are coming out? Now, eventually when we're erasing next time, we'll erase these lines. Let's put a middle vein on our leaves and we're going to page three already and we want to put these veins on our leaves so we're just going to come down the center of our leaf now don't make these lines super straight nature is curvy so don't worry if, if your lines are a little curvy that's a good thing see the veins now we need to add the side veins, which kind of comes out into the points here. But I don't draw that all the way in. I just kind of make it look like they are. We don't worry too much about that. See, like that? Let's do some on this one. And we are almost ready to ink our picture already. Yes. Now, there is one spot on here, and it is optional, where we add these lines on our petals. But I'm waiting to put those in when I ink it. I'm going to do that with ink. Now, if you have these instructions, you can put them in earlier with your pencil, but then that means you have to trace them all when you ink it. And to me, it's just as easy to put them in at this stage. So, it is time to ink. 
which is just drawing over everything we've done here and then adding these lines. And I'm going to start in by drawing these little seed things so that I don't cross over them in my inking. I want to see them clearly. See how those look? They're kind of funny looking, but when you get done with your picture, they're really cute. Now we can move right along here and ink down along the sides of this, down around this circle center that you did, up this other side. Now, when you come up here, I don't draw this little top half of this circle here. I just go out. Now, if you draw it, it won't hurt. So that'll be something you can decide when you do your picture. And then I want to put these big seed heads here. Or whatever those are. There we go. Now I'm going to draw around my petals and my leaves. And then I will come back and show you how I do these lines. Okay. I have inked around my frame and around my flower and my leaves. I have not erased my lines yet. I'm going to do that after I make these lines. Um, next I want to fill in these lines. You want Let's put in those optional lines. I don't know why. I just really like the way these look. But these are optional. You can do them or leave them out as you please. It just somehow kind of, I don't know, enhances the drawing. So let's start with this petal here. And we're just going to make lines that kind of follow the contour of your leaf. Just like that. We're going to do that all the way around. Now, sometimes I like to do the inner part of the petal and then do the outer one so that I'm sure I get all my contours in pretty good. But you don't need to be picky about this. And if you've noticed, I haven't been real picky about any of this. See how we did that? And I'm going to go all the way around on all of these petals. Following the contour. This will give the petals some shape and interest. See how these are going? We're almost done with our drawing part. And you can make this a drawing and not do anything else with it. But we're going to paint it today. Now doing this petal is just a little tricky because you have to draw your lines between all these little seed things. So just go slow and be careful. There we are. We have that done. Now, the next thing we need to do is erase our lines, our pencil lines. Two colored pencils, a yellow colored pencil and a red one. Um, this is called Crimson Lake, and these are Prismacolors. These are made out of wax. 
and I find that these little spots here, in fact, this wouldn't be hard to do with your watercolors, but I have been doing it with my Crimson Lake pencil. I'm coloring these in with my colored pencil because now when I go and try to go between all these little lines when I'm painting this petal, this wax will kind of act as a resist and I won't be covering up all these little spots here that are going to be a bright yellow. Now there are things you can use that you can paint over these that will retain the white or an underneath color and then you rub it off. There's different names for it. Brisket is one. Some people will use a rubber cement to do that. But I want to make these tutorials uh, friendly for our younger painters too and a lot of our older painters that uh, can't tolerate the smell of some of these chemicals and believe me some of these things can really smell especially rubber cement so I was experimenting with this and seeing if we can get out of using the smelly things and that is one nice thing about watercolors they're not like oils where you have to use so many smelly things and I find this tends to work pretty well at resisting some of the colors. So when I come over this, I'm going to do these, you'll see, in a uh, bright yellow. And when I come around them, it will kind of resist my redder paint out here and keep my yellow. Now, I have only tried this with Prismacolors. So if you have some colored pencils at home and you want to try this, try it on a scrap piece of paper first to see if it works. Because some colored pencils are not wax based. I'm not sure what base they do have, but that may not resist your paint. So try it out. And if you can't do that method, you can just paint these the way we usually do with our paints. Just paint them with uh, your watercolors. But this kind of helps us put it down without, uh, put our paint down without going over the tops of these. And a lot depends on how accurate you are with your painting. Some of us are getting old and we have shaky hands and we don't do small spots so well anymore. Now, with this colored pencil, though, that be sure you lay this down nice and thick. In fact, what we call burnished in the colored pencil world. You can't see much of white of the white of the paper underneath this. You want it to be very thick on your piece of paper so it will act as a resist. But I would suggest you try this method. And these, again, as I say, are Prismacolor, which I know works. I don't know. I need to try the Crayola brand or what uh, some other brands, but I haven't done that yet. So be sure and check yours out. It's time to put the yellow on. And I like to do this before I do any other painting so that these parts are kind of protected. Now I wouldn't just go and purposely put paint on top of the yellow. But it does help a lot. And again, put a good coating of this on. There we go. Now we need to get our piece of paper ready to paint. I'm going to tape it to my clipboard. That way I can move my clipboard around easily if I need to move it. And we're going to line our tape up along our lines that we drew.
just like this. Now we are ready to paint, so let's get our paint ready. Now I have been practicing these hibiscus, so I have some of my colors where I've mixed them up. This is just some red with water added, and when I was finished, I let it dry. And you can, would you say, reconstitute this again and keep using it. You don't have to clean these out if you think you'll use that color again. So what I would do is just add some water to this, and I want a light pink. So I added some water, and I'm just going to mix. Now you also will need something to test your paint on. Get your scrap piece of paper out and test your colors out. A very pale pink good now you also need to get some of these colors soaking here I want my dark red because I'm going to use that as a shadow for my petals I'm going to get these two greens now they're just kind of getting ready to be used and just in case we want them, I'm not sure. Let's put some water in on our yellows. Okay. Now, I like to do the undercoat of my flower with my pinky here. And then I will come in and do my shadow area with the darker red here. Let's be sure it's stirred up and ready to go. And then the highlight area, I will do with this yellow so let's get to work and I'll show you how we do that all right let's see if we can work this way it's a little crowded but I find I like to see what the person the teacher <laughs> is doing over here with the paints a lot of times I watch tutorials and they're painting here and their hand just constantly disappears they're getting paint and dipping in water and such and yet I have no idea what they're up to so let's put a nice light pink layer here on a petal. This is wet on dry. This paper is perfectly dry, but I'm using a very thin mixture. There's a lot of water in this to get a very light pink because there's no pink in our um, Crayola brand. Now some of your other brands will have a pretty pink in them that you can use but we can get a nice pink with our Crayola just by adding water until we like that tone now let's dip into our pan here which we put water on and we want a dark shadow here at the bottom and we're just going to dab this on you don't need to actually what you'd call paint at this point and we want to dab around the far edge here. This is how we're making our shadow. Now, wipe off your brush and dip into our yellow. And we're going to add just a little bit of yellow as a highlight across this part of the leaf. Now you're not scrubbing this, you're just kind of dotting these colors on. And we want the watercolor to kind of take care of itself. So now come along and be sure you've got all the white specks out. Just lightly touch. Don't do a lot of scrubbing on it. You can kind of pull up on that shadow color if you'd like. And pull up the shadow here just a trifle. And work in our yellow. And we want to do that with every 
petal. Now this is wet right now. We need to let it dry. So just come along to our next petal and we'll coat it with pink. Dab into your dark red, add some shadow drops. These are very wet drops too. That way they kind of spread out and take care of themselves. This is letting the watercolors do its thing. We need to clean our brush, get our little bit of yellow here in the center. And do the rest of these leaves. Now, if you find you're getting some hard lines here, and it does seem to depend on the weather. Alrighty. So if you kind of keep on top of that while they're wet, you can kind of spread out the hard lines that start to appear. And when you get to this petal, be very careful going around your colored pencil. But, it should also resist it if you miss. Now, we need to let these edges dry before we can do our leaves. Because if we put green on there now, it's going to merge into that red and um, not be very pretty. So I'm going to let these dry a few minutes and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, while we're waiting for this to finish drying, let's mix this up some green for our leaves. I cleaned my red corner up here and we're going to mix some green here. A few drops of water. Now I'm going to go into the medium green. Crayola has a very light green, a dark green, and a medium green. This medium green is kind of a grassy green. So we're going to put that in our water here. And if you notice this is a very bright a natural green. So to calm this down just a little bit, clean your brush, add some water to your brown. I should have had this done before. We might need to let that set just a second. Let's see if we can get it. We're going to add just a little bit of brown to that green just to calm it down just a little bit. Let's see if that does it. Makes more of a natural green. Let's test it out. That will do just fine. 
All right, got my green ready. I do want to paint my little yellow veins next because they're the lightest color on the leaf. And I'm just going to go in here, get my yellow, and be sure it's nicely mixed. This is such a little bit, we're going to do it straight from the pan. Okay, I think that's probably dry enough. So let's go into this green we mixed and paint in our leaf. Now we're going to do some of the same technique on our leaves that we did on those petals. We're going to drop in some of the dark green for shadow and some of the yellow for highlights. So we have to do this all while it's wet. We're doing a wet on dry. It dries fairly quick. So we have to be sure we do it before it dries. I'm going to try to go ahead and do the whole leaf. We'll see if we can get that much done. We can always re-wet it. We need to dip into our dark green. I hope you already had that wet. We did that earlier. And we're just going to dab some shadow lines around the bottom edge where it meets the petals because there would be shadows there. We want on the tip to be darker. And then a little bit around the edges and just dab it up the center a little bit and along your vein lines. A little bit more here. Make sure we get out to the edges. Need to clean our brush and add our yellow. Get that yellow and just put a little bit of yellow in each one of the, these sections towards the center. Not a lot, just a little. There we go. That leaf, just leave it alone now after you're sure that this is at the edge and let it dry. Now we just do the same thing to these other two leaves. Dip into your green and coat it with green.
okay, I'm finishing this leaf. I think it's this yellow that just sets them right off. The highlights really make them pretty. One more leaf to go. Then we'll only have one more, well, two more steps in our picture. So let's do that third leaf. Now, the reason we're going ahead and doing this wet leaf against this wet leaf is because it's okay if this darker green bleeds through. We're putting some there anyway. Now, if these were totally different colors, we'd need to wait for it to be a lot drier. See, we're going to go get some green and put it there anyway so it didn't hurt a bit that that bled over. You feel like you're just really making a mess. It's amazing that it turns out so pretty. Time for that highlight. Oops, I got kind of a lot there. <laughs> so let's dab some of that up. There we go. Don't want too much on the end of that brush. Just a little bit. And it's easy to get too much. And then you make a mess. All right. Now, let's just put the faintest tint of a yellowish green around the flower. We don't have to cover the whole background. But just a little bit to um, soften the brightness of the white. So we need to mix that. So I have a spot where I had some mixed yesterday. So let's just go ahead and add there. We're going to put some um, water there. Now we need a, a fair bit to get around the edges of all this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add yellow. We want it just barely tinted. We don't want a lot of color here. And just the tiniest bit of this light green to give it a little bit of a green tint. Just a little bit. Now, let's test it. Very light. In fact, yeah, it's about right, I think. We could even do that lighter. And if you want it lighter, all you do is add a couple drops water if you want that little lighter yet. It'll give it a little bit of a vintagey look. And after we've done that we need to add our acrylic dots if you decide that you want to do that. So I will be showing you how to do that. But right now we're just going to lightly put this yellow around the outside edges of our flower. So, grab your little paint holder, grab some yellow paint, and you just need a dot of this, just a little tiny bit. That's even too much. <laughs> I'm going to use the very tiny pointy end of this, I don't know if you can see, or if you have a brush with a tiny end. Or say a ballpoint pen that does no ink in it anymore. I think that would probably work. Maybe the tip of a pencil would work. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. So dip down in your paint. Straight down. And come put dots on top of each one of these where you had a circle. Now this doesn't make too much of a difference yet at this part. Point. <laughs> But if you look at a real hibiscus, there's probably hundreds of these little dots around this stamen. So let's just add dots all around this area. 
and your eye will just fill these right in for you. If you see, I'm coming over here and grabbing this paint. There just isn't room for us to have everything in our uh, camera view, is there? There we go. Now we have a lot more of these. And be careful. These will be wet for a while and let them dry. Clean off your little pointy tool before you quit. And now we do need to finish putting our yellow around. See if we can do it now. And then we need to assign it it and we'll be done. Alrighty. Our hibiscus. Alright. So, I say just sign it. I like to date it with the year at least. And except for pulling the, the tape off, we are done. Let's do that. Now again, I can let that dry a little more. But we'll be fine. Remember to pull away from your picture so you don't tear the paper. And there we are. There is our finished hibiscus. I hope you have enjoyed painting this flower. And I hope you paint many more hibiscuses in the future. And we're going to be back with you in another video with some more, probably, flower work. So I'm going to say bye-bye for now. And you have a great day.